Hey guys, welcome to Offshoot Comics Off Topic. We're your host Kirby Kid and Black Superman. Also known as David Clark and Walter Bryan. And it's been a little bit, but we're back. Yeah, for a minute, because you know we're still trying to work on Long Beach Comic Con. Yeah, but we had something important to say. So yeah, that. between that and being sick and life, we're back and we're talking about Ender's Game. Yeah, now. He hasn't read Ender's Game. I have. It's one of my favorite books. Orson Scott Card is one of my favorite authors. Even though there's a lot of controversy about the guy and his and his personal beliefs, that has nothing to do with the book. The book is amazing. The movie is pretty good. It was I. Right. I mean, when it comes to children being the ones to save the world, when it would the job would much better be done by an adult, it always kind of throws me. Like even the Evangelion, I'm like, mm, really though. Really? Three 14 year olds? That's your best? That's your line of defense right there? Well, I mean, you know, maybe they bought superpowers from a grocery store or something. You no, know? no, that's, that's, that's be- our comic book, Heroes Are Us, available on iOS. Just to search Offshoot Comics. Um, that's different because that is powered by the light of belief, and everyone knows the older you get, the more cynical you get, and your power of belief is waned. I mean, good segue. Yeah. Okay, now back to Ender's Game. <laughs> yeah, that's the end of game. Um, that's the end of game. So basically, it's about a kid who's named Ender, which, by the way, is probably like the coolest name to have growing up. It's like, what's your name, Ender? Oh, I. Right. <laughs> um, he beats the crap out of bullies. Which, if you like watching bullies getting the crap kicked out of them, you will love this movie. Yeah. Now, for those of you who've who've actually read the book, like I have, okay. There's these fights in the in the uh, book, you know, the Stilson fight and the fight with he, he has um, with the jerk who was his uh, leader, and I can't think of his name right now. Okay, those fights in the book are violent, but when you watched them in this movie, he puts the beat down on Stilson. Like it's ridiculous how beat down Stilson took it. Now the yeah, uh, the I, other I, fight, I, first guy, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the first guy. <laughs> He, he yeah. got beat in front of his homies. It was just, he was like, "All right, who else wants some?" They're like, "No, nah, we're good, man." Yeah, and then and then he's talking head while he's doing it. So he's like, "Yeah, no, no. Remember, you might decide to come jump me, but remember what happens to people that try to come take me out. I take them out." Right now, he doesn't know he killed the guy, but he killed the he, guy. He, he killed that kid. Now, uh, now the whole movie they're talking about this hero. What's his name? I never. Mazer actually, Rockham. Say it one more time. It's Mazer Rackham. Okay, because I've never act like they said it a lot, and I'm like every M-A-Z-E-R, time. M a z e r r a c k h a m. Okay, Mazer hopefully Rackham. that is on top of the screen right now for you to see it. <laughs> <coughs> but you talk about how he uh, he saved the world, but basically he just blew up the hive ship, and they're like, "Oh, we can't think anymore." <laughs> he lucked into it. Yeah. And he even admits in the book he looked into it. Actually, he admits in the movie he looked into yeah. it. Like, he had no idea what he was doing. He, he just lucky. he just kind of was like, my ship is about to blow up. I'll just ram that ship and hope for, and hope for the best. And yeah. it happened to be the ship that the Queen was on. Yeah, and then, um, real quick, though, I had a quick question. I don't okay. know if maybe you can answer it. When they were doing the simulation battles and Ender was, like, zooming out, and zooming in and stuff. Okay, so I get the zooming in. That's from the ship, right? Mm-hmm. Zooming out. What is he looking from? From the um, flagship. Right. Okay. Isn't the flagship one of the ships that we were looking at? No. There's an actual ship that's at the back of the entire the battle. The way back. Yeah. Oh, and okay. and that's the ship that his that his um, line of sight is coming from. See, the movie I just spent twelve dollars on should have explained that. <laughs> <laughs> the movie that you spent twelve dollars on should have explained a lot of things that it didn't explain. They cut out a lot of really important stuff, mm-hmm. and um, we were talking about it after the movie was over. That there were some things that he simply didn't understand, specifically because they just didn't bring it up. Like it never made sense to him why Ender had to be the person to do this, you know, like yeah. or, or why Ender didn't know that it was real. And if you were reading the book, in the book, Ender was told he has four years before any of this is going to happen. Right. Right as he goes into the simulation and then kills them all. Yeah, here he's not told anything. So, I mean, it's it, it, it kind of, I guess, it kind of makes more sense the book's way. But one thing I didn't get, and I guess it's just because I just don't care, uh, is that they're aliens. Who cares what their reasoning is? Murder all of them. Yeah, I agree with you there. Because, I mean, realistically... They came here, they attacked us, we sent them home, they went packing, we went after them, blow them up. And none of them are hot chicks, so who cares? (laughs) Just Here's the other thing that we were talking about. 
Okay, it's a seventy billion dollar ship that they used to blow everything okay, up, right? They had one of those. Why does it matter how much it costs? Exactly. You have an entire planet that's going to come to an end, and you've got the chance to make seventeen of these ships. Build seventeen of these ships. Who cares how much it costs? Because if the world's destroyed, what's that money going to do for you? Okay, now a little addendum in the book. They actually have four of them. Only four. Yeah, I think that was all they could build. Now, I know it's expensive. Is it, are they hard to build? A chain reaction device that can blow up a planet? Yeah, they're, they're, a, little we're, di- we're, they're a little difficult. We're really good at building things to destroy things, though. Yeah. Now, now, considering how far out into space, apparently, we can go at this point in time, you would think that they could go out and find these materials somewhere else, maybe pick them up on the way and just start building a ship and dragging it along as they were going. But... We digress. Yeah, I mean, I like, honestly, you, you could have just built like ten of them and assemble them in a Gatling gun formation and just have one shoot and move and shoot and move and while they're moving, regen. So by the time they come back around, bam. Okay, here's another problem that you you don't know understand because you haven't read the book. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be another problem for people out there. Um, the Formix learn really quickly. So oh, after that, can first- they can they learn how to shield themselves from antimatter? No, yeah, actually. Really See, can. the problem the problem with the doctor device, uh-huh. the the MD device, um, which is they call it the the little doctor. The problem with it is that for the chain reaction to work, everything had to be close. So all they had to do to make it useless is just not be close to each other anymore. So after their first fight, where mm-hmm. they used the device on them, the Formics all just kept their ships away from each other. So they were never able to actually use it in another is that, battle. Is that in the book? It's in the book. Oh, it's not so in the, the book. It's not in the movie. So the gun didn't work ever again. No, it did. It blew the planet. They they worked then, twice. But other, the first other, the, 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 like about six battles all happened at one time in, in this movie that happened throughout the book. So like the the thing where all those ships flow up, uh huh. That was like a battle that happened maybe fifty pages before the planet gets blown up. And then after that, it never works ever again. And it never works ever again. So they're all and so then when <coughs> Ender decides he's not going to do this anymore and he decides to cheat, then he's like, okay, fine. I'm just going to blow up the planet. And he blows up the planet, which no one ever thought to do. Now, my question is, why did no one ever think to do that? Because as I was reading that book, first it was up. the first thought I had. Blow the planet up. Blow the planet up. Yeah. I mean, we could blow our own planet up 21 times today. Give me Pretty much, yeah. give me fifty years. I can kill any planet out there. <laughs> <laughs> and with a weapon like that, I mean, first of all, they should have they should have like the first thing that they should have done after figuring out, out how to do that beam is miniaturize it and put it on every single drone. Yeah. See. Okay. Once again, the Formix also have shared knowledge. So like right. every queen shares each one's knowledge. You know, they've got the generational mm-hmm. knowledge thing. So when one got killed, they all knew. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, put it on the drones. Yeah. So every little shot is like atomized, atomized, atomized. You know, yeah. what I'm saying. Apparently, it doesn't work that way. It, it should. Takes, it, it takes too much power or something. They like make that. a shrink ray. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing that kind of annoyed me though was I don't think at least in the movie I don't know what it was like in the book, but they were not raising the children correctly. One like the bully in the beginning was all like, "You cheated." Okay. First thing, there is no such thing as cheating when it comes to war. There's winners, and then there's the dead people. <laughs> That's what Ender was saying. Yeah, but he was like, 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 what kind of system lets those kids even like? As soon as they say you're cheating, I would have put the like the little you know the little tracker they had to him. Mm-hmm. I would have just killed him right there. He was useless. He didn't have one. He didn't have one. No, he'd already lost his. He's washed out. Oh really? Yeah. See, the only something people, else I should have explained. The only people who still had those trackers in their head were the people who were getting ready, who were getting um, prepared to go to battle school. So once so they why pulled them out, why are they still there? Just cause oh no, they, they they are all being trained to be soldiers. Oh, just but not, they're not being trained to be okay. officers. Right. Oh, okay. So like that guy who said Ender was cheating, which by the way is another thing that happened in battle school. So they they crossed a bunch of stuff up. He, but, he's a grunt basically. Yeah, he bet. Yeah. But since he's so much older than Ender, he's like, "You cheated. There's no way you could have beat me." And in the book, Ender like, and, and Ender doesn't just walk off. He actually says, "Okay, let's do it again." And then instead of it taking like 15 minutes like he did the first time, he beats him in like four seconds. Wow. Yeah, because Ender really is just that smart, which you don't get in this book, no. in this movie at all. You get the idea that he's smart, but you don't have any idea he how psychotic. He, 
Because there's some time oh, where he yeah, was like, he's like a- I'm look, I'm thinking about murdering you right now. <laughs> <laughs> like when he when he met was it not I want to say Bozo but I know that's not his Bonzo name. Bonzo yeah like when he when he was like look little midget I'm getting ready to eat your eyes <laughs> you, you don't even understand right now how close to death you are and then he actually kills him which, yeah well that was which, an accident though yeah but 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 was it he deserved it but was it though and was it an accident it. Bozo deserved it he, he, he deserved, deserved it. it yeah he deserved it because like they like they make a little pack in the, in the, at, in the middle of the movie. And then, like, the very next second destroys that pack. <laughs> he was like, hey, you let me train with y'all and stuff? He's like, yeah, because I want to save face. And he's like, cool. Five seconds later, you're going to sit in the back and not train with the... What? For real, dude? I mean, come on. He kind of deserved it. He had he, a little, little he Napoleon deserved, complex. He, he, he had a very big Napoleon complex. <laughs> and he was a little man. Like, like when, when Ender first walks up... And tells him, you know, I'm gonna do whatever I'm gonna do. And then, like, dude walks in. He's like, I told you not to train with him. He punched Ender in the gut, and Ender goes, <laughs> He's like, That's so weak. <laughs> you know, like, they, well, I mean, his older brother who beats him up every day is like freaking Hulk without Gamma. He really, dude, Tina was humongous. <laughs> yeah, and y'all know, they should be people like, hey, for those of you who don't know, his older brother is a psychotic m- maniac. That's He's also as want, smart as he is. That's who you want leading you. Who cares the state of the human race as long as there's a state of it? Spoiler <laughs> alert: Peter becomes the ruler of the world, president okay. of humanity. So, so he gets his wish. Yeah. Also, by the way, um, for my fellow StarCraft fans out there, when you watch Ender basically click and drag his way to victory, it's like a gigantic StarCraft game. I'm pretty sure Blizzard. I'm pretty sure you based it off Ender's Game. Because y'all came out a good decade after. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, because there's a lot of this and this, and you go over there, and you go over there, and then they go fight things for you. I mean, it, it, it it's, it's, I mean, if you see the movie, and they go play StarCraft, you'll see the difference. I mean, the what are they called? The, the aliens in this? The Formix. They're basically Zerg. Or rather, Zerg are basically the Formix. I mean, they, yeah. they, they, they basically, they look, they look exactly the same. Now, you know, uh, there are a few issues that are going to pop up. I think one of the biggest issues for me um, with this was that, and it's, it kind of is what flowed in after, like, the fourth Harry Potter movie, where, you know, Harry was still playing Quidditch, but they never really showed him playing Quidditch yeah, anymore. Yeah, because the Dark Lord was back. <laughs> yeah, but Quidditch is such an awesome game. And, like, you're, you're watching it on the show and you, or on these movies, and you go, Quidditch is awesome. Put some more in here. Right, they're like, so, Quidditch, Quidditch, oh, Death Eater sign. Good show. Quidditch, Quidditch, <laughs> Quidditch. Uh, oh, let's just dodge <laughs> death real quick while playing Quidditch. I mean, Harry almost got killed like three times playing Quidditch. It's, 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 it's a fun game, game, though. But the battle school, when, they, when, they're doing the, when they're doing the battle simulations, the battle simulations were really freaking cool. And they had a chance to do something really cool in the middle there. Like, you could have done a whole lot less mind game and a whole lot more battle simulation. Although I did like the part, the mind, there's a part of the mind game where he's like a little mouse and there's a weird, creepy looking giant that's like, I had these two cups that are both obviously poison. Um, one of them will get you to Fairyland or whatever, the other one will get you to death. They both get you to death. It's to test your frustration. At the, and like, after like five minutes, and there's like, I choose the third option where I crawl inside your skull and eat your brain out. <laughs> and he does. He's a I man mean, he does. after my own heart sometimes, man. <laughs> Just, and, just kill the giant. And it was cool to watch how the, the psychologist that was like going, I I, I, did, I don't know what to do with that. I, I didn't expect that. No yeah. no one's ever done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, someone has or stuff like that. I mean, that's kind of like a Captain Kirk. Change the rules. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that maybe that's, well, he would, Ender would be more like based on Kirk than Kirk being based on. Oh, that's, what I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so. I, I know my Star Trek history. You would, yeah. My mom's a trekkie. I, yeah, I'd my actually, mom's a big trekkie. I'd, I'd actually be murdered right now if I get that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those who have read the book, you're going to find a lot of issues. But here's what you need to do: wipe all this stuff out of your mind and just take this as a movie about Ender. Forget about Ender's Game, the book. And just take this as a movie about Ender's Game, and you'll enjoy it. But you just you you have to wipe out all that other stuff. Because those kids that he beat up, they never said they were dead. No, because I guess they, they didn't want to see kids killing other kids. No, but it, but in the book, they, 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 they you find dead. out they're dead. Yeah, they're they're they are they are gone. Yeah, because when when I'm, I'm just gonna call him Bozo, that's more comfortable for me. When Bozo falls down, he's not dead. He's like. Oh. 
Like his brain is still making his body do random spasms. Yeah, but in the book, he was just in gone. the book. They like General Graf actually says, "Yeah, he was dead before Ender walked out of the bathroom." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I mean. The, the, the people have gotten a lot more uncomfortable in the past 30 years with the idea that kids perform any kind of violence against each other. Yeah, so it was a pretty good movie. I didn't, I didn't see the, I didn't read the book. Um, I enjoyed the movie. Like I said, I had a few issues with uh, the premise, but even still, the graphics were cool. Harrison Ford was uh, basically thinking or saying what I was thinking. Who cares? Really? Who cares? Kill the enemy. No one cares. Yeah, there's a lot more love in the in the book. Who cares about love? You're fighting alien bugs. No, what I, what I mean by that is, um, after all the really tough talk Harrison Ford does, and even at the end of this movie, mm. Harrison Ford never actually says anything like, I care anything for this kid. Who cares? He basically is like, screw you and the horse you rode in on, we won. In the book... He like comes to the room and he's talking to Mazer Rockham and they're like, you know, I love this kid like he's my son and I hate what I've had to do to him, but it was necessary. It's a little bit, of, it's just a little bit of a plot point, but I mean, it gives you a little bit more human side to to graph, I guess. It's not necessary. Real quick though, as good as humans are at finding and murdering things, how did they not notice a queen and an egg for another queen? Three steps away <laughs> from their base. It might have actually been part of the base. You didn't go to the gigantic, obvious castle like structure outside your front door and look around. And the egg is sitting on a pedestal. Out in the open. I mean, it's not even it's not even hidden. Like in the book is hidden in a wall. You know, so they may have actually looked for it. And there's no queen. The egg speaks to him. Mm. In this movie. Ender walks into the middle of what looks like um, the what Cerebro's room. Kinda, yeah. Yeah, it looks a little bit like Cerebro's room. And there's a big pedestal there, and there's this egg. And he walks up to the egg, and the egg is like making heartbeat noises and moving around. And then a queen of the Formix walks up walks and up. starts just starts talking she to him. Walks up. I mean, you don't hear what it says, but it basically tells him, See, you know, that's the, we're dying, and this is the last. You queen don't leave a gigantic castle-like structure on a former colony. What you do is you either turn it into part of your base, like you did with the rest of the planet, or you flatten it and you start terraforming. I agree. So stupid. It makes a little more sense in the book. Was it further away in the book, at least? It was a cave in the book. Okay, that makes and, more sense. And, and, it's, and the, like I said, the egg is just stuck but in the like, wall. No joke. Here is their base, right? And then, like, literally right here, like, <laughs> actually sharing a wall with the base. <laughs> It's like it's, it's not sharing no, a wall. It's like it's, it's maybe it's like if you had like a ground floor apartment and you really, really, really hated gigantic alien bugs and they just moved in upstairs and were like, <laughs> hey, we gonna just live up here. Is that cool? And you go, yeah, whatever. Shh. This is dumb. It's like this, <laughs> you can see it from the window. Yeah, but they were too busy to go. You could walk there on one breath if you really had to. You go send the janitor over there. You could. The janitor could have ended the war. <laughs> he could have walked over, taken a pocket knife, and go, stab, 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 with a little gun, shoot the queen, and just walk out like a boss. Nah. They let a 12-year-old kid find, hey, there's an alien queen right here. And he took it. And, oh, and they're cool with that. They're like, you're an admiral. Go do whatever. No, no, They don't know that he has the egg. That's another problem. You let an egg walk onto your base with no scanners. No alien scanner. What's a, you don't know if they can't like hide in hosts or like sneak on the ship. No, you just let them walk on and just leave. Didn't check his stuff. Yeah, didn't yeah, see he, where he was going. They gave Ender a ship. He just drove off. He was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna fly off with his egg. It's cool." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but th uh, those are my, my major problems. I, I actually did really enjoy this movie. Yeah, it was um, a good movie. It was like, a good movie. Yeah, like I mean, there have been way. Way worse ones. I mean, like Pacific Rim. Yeah, Last Airbender. Oh God, you Dragon you, Ball you, Evolution. You, you said those words. The last Dragon Ball Evolution Bender. You. Oh yeah, uh, I went there. You. Oh, like I, I felt my entire childhood just be ripped away why just cause, then. Cause, why does Dragon Ball Evolution? Yeah. And the last Airbender. Well, I wasn't a kid when the last Airbender was out. But but, yeah. but, but Dragon Ball. By I was the still, way, if Core doesn't. Shape up and fly right. We're gonna do a core hate video. If you want to see a core hate video, leave us a message, like in the comments or something, because 
Yeah, we've like, been storing it up for a while. Yeah, like if you if you hate Cora as much as we do, just just give us just give us a message. We'll tell you why we hate it. We don't have like random reasons. Oh, we no. have legitimate reasons. And why. They are obvious reasons. Yeah. How do you not know your uncle's evil? Scummy uncle. Uncles yeah. are always evil unless your father is evil, which means your uncle is good. Just basic knowledge. <laughs> Everyone should know this. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. though, so that's how you feel about Ender's Game. You should go see it. I mean, it's gonna be pretty cool. And apparently, the next one's called what? In the, well, in it, the book, the book. The, the, the next, book. Book, the next book is Speaker for the Dead. If they decide to do a um a, a, sequel. a sequel, though, it'll be on Bean. It won't be on Ender. No one see Bean. No one wants to see him. No one cares about him at all. Bean has four other books. Really? Yeah. Really though? Oh, I told you Bean's a mutant. Yeah. He actually grows to be like seven feet tall. He's a he's he's a military genius, and he helps Peter take over the planet. And he's better than Ender. No, he's more. He, he's he's smarter than Ender, but not a better fighter. Not a better fighter. That makes no sense. You should be able to think your way through it. <laughs> He can think his way through it, but he doesn't have the violent aspect of his of his personality that Ender does. How do you make Ender a mutant without being violent? Yeah, you, you make bean. <laughs> Anyways, though, so yeah, go see it. It's gonna be awesome. Keep watching us. Please subscribe um, and let us know if you want us to do a Cora hate video, not on the series, on the character, because she has some issues. Yeah, because like we we actually even though Cora sucks, we like the show. We just don't like Cora. Cora. It's horrible. She anyway, is. so yeah, let us know so we get unload on her. We're, we're, I mean, we're probably just, just going to go for like a good 10 minutes just straight on just hate. <laughs> so, but uh, that's it for now. Uh, hope we get better because we're kind of sick. <laughs> so, but that's it for now. Until next time, we've been your host, Kirby Kid. And Black Superman. See you later, guys. Hey, guys, don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe, and share our videos like crazy. That's right, because we love you, we want you to love us, and we want to keep making videos for you. And keep leaving us comments. We love comments. Yes, and we answer comments. Unlike some of the other guys, we'll get out there, we'll answer, and if you uh, have a great comment, we'll make a video about it. And if you have a not so great comment, we will try to address that issue. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks. Until next time, we've been your host, Kirby Kid. And Black Superman. See you later, guys. Also, we're on iOS. Buy our comics. <laughs>